Okay, so we're out here today on a, a lovely sunny uh, Friday morning. Two degrees, cross wind between sort of 15 miles an hour steady and possibly gusting up to about 30 miles an hour. So uh, testing conditions for a back to biking rider today. Got to concentrate, got the heated grips on number three, got the seat on number two, and it's just about staving off the cold at the moment. So the object of today's exercise is to um, try and work a little bit on my counter steering. Mentioned it a couple of times in previous videos and uh, it's a new concept to me. I'm sure it's something I must have done years ago when I rode without even thinking about it. But uh, thinking back over those years, maybe I didn't even realise about it then because I, I even then I just had a tendency just to sort of lean the bike and just let the bike find its own line. Whereas just a little bit of experimentation now, I'm beginning to understand that a little prod here or a prod there on the right or left hand bars actually gets you uh, a bit more precision and a bit of a tighter radius. So uh, I'm going to have picked a deliberately twisty route today. Uh, so I'm just going to experiment really and see how I get on. Not going to be pulling up any trees so to speak, but uh, let's, just, let's just give it a go and see what happens. So here we go for the, uh, the counter steering road test. So the temperature on my thermometer is showing two degrees. A little bit of a gleam on the road, but the, uh, this road here is in sunshine, so I'm just trusting that uh, ice isn't going to be a problem today. Hope not. Should be taking it very steady. First little test, position three, push down on the left, avoid that crease in the road. Now position one, push down on the right, accelerate through. So I mentioned on the previous video, uh, video my uh, little acronym slipper, slow look press roll, going around the corners, take a look at that if you're interested, so that's the thing I'm going to try and practice today and internalise. Fitted the grip puppies just before the last video. Explain the, the process and the benefits of those. If you haven't seen that, you might want to take a look. And I can just feel the heat coming through the grips, actually, through the grip puppies. So it's uh, this is the kind of day you want the heated bars. So position one through the bend, roll on. No need to counter steer there, just a little bit of a lean gets me around at the speed I want to go. So again, position one. Into position two, nice straight bit.
So, position three. Look through, roll on. Oh, horses. Horses in a bend as well, so let's keep plenty of distance, shall we? Look fairly steady. You can look at the body language of these horses, they're very calm. Give them plenty of room. You can generally tell a twitchy horse a little bit further away. And my advice there would be to keep well away. Mentioned on a previous video again how my cousin was killed probably 50 years ago actually, uh, riding a horse, just uh, jumped, bolted. And she went under a bus, so you, uh, you can't be too careful. Now into direct sunlight there, so the advice from my police biker Twitter mentor is you just slow down. No rush. Open her up now. Position two. Position one, foot through the bend. Little tip that came through on the comments. Uh, Column on my YouTube is that uh, when trees are in shade, when the road is in shade from the trees, you just treat the road as though you're driving in the middle of the night and it's had no sun at all. I thought that was a really good idea actually. So, again, I'm just going to take it ultra cautious today. You just see a little bit of a gleam, more of a gleam on the road here because we've got trees shading the road to the left hand side. So, I'm trying to be um, a thinking biker. I got my uh, Institute of Advanced Motoring logbook this week and uh, in the, uh, there's quite an interesting article at the back actually by some big cheese in the IAM, not quite sure who that was, can't remember, apologies for that. But uh, the point is, is that you don't just blindly sort of ride to a paint by numbers style like an automaton, like a robot, but you constantly got to think and make the best and safest decision to adapt to whatever the circumstances are. And I thought that's a really good idea, I like that. So something I'm going to try and do. I'm a terrible rule breaker, I've got to be honest. I've always found it easy to ask for forgiveness rather than permission. Particularly in today's uh, bureaucratic world, process driven world, where people seem to have lost the uh, the power to make decisions. I just think it's so important we rediscover that. Anyway, I digress. Back to the riding. Keep working on the counter steering. I know I have a tendency as well to grip the uh, the bars too tight, so I'm hoping that the uh, the grip puppies are going to give me a little bit of uh, a bit of sort of uh, positive feedback there in terms of just trying to remind me to stop doing that. And also the fact they are slightly thicker means I don't have to cling on as hard. The road surface today appears to be reasonably clean. I think most of the tractors now, have, it being now early December, the tractors have done what they need to do on the fields. So you might get the occasional farmer going out, I guess, doing a little bit of spraying or something like that. But uh, generally speaking, the roads are going to be cleaner. 
so I guess it's just the uh, the ice and the uh, the salt and just this little gleam on the road of moisture that we need to be careful of so I'm hoping my Metzl or Road Tech I think they're Z8 tyres that do the job I know nothing at all about motorcycle tyres really but, so these seem to have a reasonable reputation and the tyres on this bike are literally I think 3,900 years old so no worries there so let's counter steer here let's just lean on that right grip just push on it a little bit and now let's push left yeah interesting still not fully confident with this but uh, I can see why uh, I'll see how it works anyway So we're coming into Cannons Ashby now, again you may remember my video where I, uh, it was my first ride out actually when I bought the bike. Nice little chat with the uh, National Trust uh, Warden. And you'll actually see the, camp, the, um, the Priory here on the left hand side. So a lot of these buildings were damaged, decimated during what we call in, uh, in England the uh, dissolution of the monasteries. Henry VIII's purge on the uh, Roman Catholic Church when he was seeking his divorce because he wanted to remarry again. Beautiful building. There she is. Trying to get into the habit as well of actually breaking the bike um, with the brakes what I've been doing I think from a quite a lazy perspective is selecting a lower gear and then using the clutch to brake I don't know how many of you do, do that but uh, I guess that's uh, is that a bad habit let me know what you think as opposed to just um, braking down to a particular gear and then rolling off on the throttle without using the clutch Nice little village here to practice my counter steering. And my positions as well. Don't want to get too far over to position number three here in case someone's coming around that corner and cutting it. And again, I'm probably taking the, the corners maybe a lot more tentatively than some of you guys and girls. But I'm doing it safely, so confidence will come, I hope, but not overconfidence. Great road this for practicing what I'm wanting to practice this morning because it's uh, not just um, sort of swerving left and right, but also it's up and down as well. Here we are, position three. Taking a peek over the hedge, can't see anything. And let's counter steer left. Here we are. Nice. Nearly an expert. Not. Everyone's well wrapped up for the cold this morning. We're expecting snow in England over the next couple of days. Some parts of the country have already had it. I'm in the Midlands, I think we're just at that stage now where we're just expecting it. Feels rather like the opening uh, two or three minutes on that cartoon, The Snowman by uh, Raymond Briggs. Nice little counter steer here. Again, I'm listening to a little bit of classical this morning. Just helps spark my brain off, gets me thinking. I don't know whether any of you have experimented with that since I mentioned it a video or two ago, but a little bit of classical music definitely helps you think. I generally find music with words that are discernible, sing along to them, are generally a distraction, whereas 
music with words that aren't discernible. So for me, that's things like opera or sort of choral type music. I find very helpful. Try it and see. Tweaked my grips up to number four now. Just starting to feel the cold in my thumbs. Although it's interesting on the, um, I don't know whether it's the position of the fairing and the mirrors here, but you don't feel the, the cold on your fingers, but you do feel it on your thumbs. It's interesting, isn't it, how often you want to take a different line there. I was taking line number three. I actually wanted to move into uh, more the middle of the road, but just like here ahead of me, there's actually a crease in the road where the road's been repaired and I didn't want to go onto it. So what I'm noticing about the motorcycling is you're constantly having to read the conditions. And again, as you know, you know my uh, motto is I'm no expert, but uh, I can read. But you have to learn to read a different way, don't you, when you ride a bike? And I think the moment you stop that reading, you, uh, you're probably in trouble. I posted on the forum uh, yesterday, I'm not sure whether it's a fault or not, but I've noticed when I'm riding over a rough surface, then I feel from an area below and behind my feet almost a, a chatter. It's that rather like I'm riding over a, a cattle grid, but it feels like a bit more of a higher frequency, and you can hear it and you can feel it. And originally, my original instinct was that the, um, the centre stand was loose. That's how it felt. It felt quite harsh. Um, now, it's interesting, I've been riding over some not perfect road surfaces this morning, but I've not picked it up at all. Now, one of the guys on the forum was asking me what mode did I have the bike set in. So at the moment I've got it in normal, um, but I'm also going to experiment maybe on a different ride with, with soft as well. Now I don't know whether I've got the bottle to uh, put it into dynamic, a bit like warp speed 5. Um, but uh, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this, so any of you out there who are riding the, um, the shaft driven BMWs, I'd be curious if you've uh, ever had this experience of... Um, a sort of a chatter and it's it's not at high speed it's generally when I'm sort of doing 30 40 miles an hour over a let's call it a corrugated surface and it it, it does feel quite sort of harsh uh, it's a little bit like you know when you've got um, a drill and you've got the hammer action set on the drill but you see now I'm riding the bike and I wouldn't call this a perfect surface I'm riding over but I can't feel it at all now I don't know whether that's uh, just um, something to do with the shaft drive, backlash, um, I suspect there's no fault at all and it's just the character of the bike but I'm just curious about it so any comments I'd be interested. Let me know please. Just back off the speed a little bit, heading down the hill. Roadkill there, happy magpie. Pheasant that didn't make it. Shooting season here in the UK, so you often hear the uh, the sound of the shotguns. Lots of shoots going on. My kids laugh at me about this, but years ago I went to uh, Salbach in Austria skiing. And I'd never skied on snow before, I'd done some dry uh, slope skiing, so I knew some of the basics. But all the people I went with were, um, had had more experience on snow than I had, actually. Um, but what I did was, we signed up to uh, a class uh, when we got there, and you get all the usual advice when you're skiing about benzene knees and what's the trees, all that kind of stuff. But I made my mind up that rather than just mess around in those first three or four days and sort of have fun, I was just going to work really hard and apply myself to be as disciplined as I possibly could in learning the drills and the exercises, you know, the snow plows and so forth, sidestepping and all that. And I worked really hard at it. Um, and then what I found was, over days... Um, days four and five, days four, five, six, something like that, was that my ability... Um, really came up to a very good standard and I was um, 
I was skiing blue runs and uh, not nothing black, no, no, none of the black runs, but I was skiing the blue runs very comfortably actually. And I'm trying to take the same attitude in my uh, in my motorcycling actually, just trying to work very hard. I think particularly early on. So I'm coming out for a run today. Let's say it's going to be probably just over an hour, something like that. But I'm working very hard early on, it's always at something specific. And what I've learned is don't be discouraged when you make mistakes. Uh, the, the, the key is to fail often and fail better. So I'm aware, for example, I've not been looking at my mirrors every eight seconds. I'm aware that some of my road positioning hasn't been of the best, but I'm working at it. And as you gradually keep that pressure on, then what was a, a conscious incompetence, then it essentially shifts into a, a conscious competence and eventually when you've done it lots of times and the magic number appears to be 10,000 times by the way according to researchers so when you've done it 10,000 times you do it without thinking about it but when you're learning it's um, something you've really got to think about and focus on so as I say my kids really laugh at me and give me a hard time when I make these uh, speeches I'm sure none of you make speeches to your kids but when you do you know do you get the same look than I do that breeze now it's quite um, quite exposed here just feel the breeze on my right shoulder and I'm just conscious that I don't want to be pushed into this uh, left hand hedge so I'm just going to back off a little bit slow look press roll You can see there that horse just looked that little bit more twitchy, didn't it? And it's in an interesting position because this is literally just coming off a dual carriageway here where traffic's going to be moving relatively fast. Having said that, watching the rider, the rider looked extremely competent. I'm no expert judge in this, but I've seen a few um, people riding horses over the last few years. We keep horses ourselves and you just... Um, you just get a feel for it, you know? 1.5 degrees now, a little bit colder than when I started out, despite the sunshine. It's a quite chill. Country's under a northwestern airflow at the moment, dragging um, cold air down from the uh, Arctic regions. So again, we've got an articulated truck going around the roundabout, so the advice I've been given is you don't get inside him. Maybe I can get ahead of him. Let's let these guys go, shall we? myself in a position there I didn't really want to be in because the uh, <laughs> I was trying to avoid the guy on the left and then of course a guy came up on the inside on me so just try to make the best of it again more learning coffee factory if you get drink Kenco coffee that's where it comes from here in Banbury smell that this morning not sure if you can smell it on YouTube though
Good chance to counter steer. Counter steers uh, roundabouts for me are the acid test of my counter steering. And I probably give myself about 5 out of 10 at the moment for counter steering based on that performance just there. I'm trying to get the right balance of um, speed versus uh, pushing. Position 1. Put through the bend and trust the bike will take you there. Now position 3. A bit of space between myself and Mike Van Man. Trying to gradually practice some overtakes. So I'm not using winter gloves today, I don't have any. I've uh, just basically got one set of everything at the moment. I think I'm finding that actually I don't, I don't, I don't know whether I'll need winter gloves because the heated grips and the, uh, the fairing the shape of the wing mirrors here tend to protect your hands from the, uh, the wind blast. One thing about buying the RT when I compare it back to the, um, the four bikes I test rode during that week of the four bikes, again I don't know if you've seen the video, but uh, I've absolutely no regrets about buying this bike. I've no regrets that I didn't buy one of the other bikes so I'm very happy with my choice I just think there's such a lot of learning ahead of me nice place to practice my counter steering just consciously pushing pushing my way around these corners. chance to practice an overtake. Bail out, that's good I think actually, I'll take that as a piece of learning. Gave myself a safe space to get back into to bail out. a good view down the road. Just notice myself creeping up a little bit too close on this van. I don't want to get too close before i am uh, got the intention to overtake. So I can see down the left hand side. Just moved into position one there to have a glimpse down the left. interesting actually in my car I'd have been past him by now but on the bike I'm still getting the feel of it so I don't want to put myself in a situation where I can't control the momentum
again, I'm happy with that. I'd rather be tentative than overcautious, overconfident. Sorry, I'd rather be tentative than overconfident. Push, 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 push. It's interesting that with roundabouts, it seems to be the um, the skill is getting the the counter steer balanced with the throttle. Too much throttle pushes you too wide. Too little counter steer takes you too wide. That's the feel. That's the thing. I think I've got to probably just repeat and repeat and repeat. Push, 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 push. Life saver, left shoulder. Off we go. I think the other thing with roundabouts is you get dodgy road surfaces, don't you? You can get a little bit of oil or diesel. I'd just so much rather be cautious. Two speed cameras. Really can't see the point of speed cameras here. You're out in the countryside. These are just simply uh, money-making machines, aren't they? Barriers to making progress. Pure and simple. I didn't vote for them. I don't know whether you did. Very impressive this leather jacket I bought. It's a it's a wiser uh, leather jacket. Um, I can't remember what I paid for it. Got it from Sports Bike Shop. Uh, I'm wearing it today with a little sort of a tabard that comes inside. It's like a little um, quilted waistcoat type thing. Although it doesn't fasten up the front for some reason. I think I'm probably going to zip it in to do that, which I haven't done. But um, it just keeps the cold out actually. I'm wearing it with a just wearing a, a simple fleece with it and a t-shirt. The fact that the, uh, the temperature is relatively low, two degrees now, but actually my upper half is quite warm. I'd say the only bit of me that feels cold today on the bike is the, uh, the tips of my thumbs. Maybe my shins, because I'm wearing short boots. Also wearing some, um, some leggings, waterproof leggings, just to keep the, uh, the cold out. But apart from that, I feel quite comfortable. speed bumps on the road, what's the point of those? Nice safe bit of road, nice bit of driving road and let's put some bumps on them, let's make the road surface rubbish. All things we have to pay for to install and maintain as well. They wreck the, um, in the, uh, the suspension on your car, no point. What a waste of money. More of them. There we are, that's the fifth set of speed bumps. Fourth set of speed bumps. Why? Well, I'm coming into the little village of Dunchurch now.
nice little place. And he's famous for being the uh, one of the meeting places of the uh, the gunpowder plotters, Guido Forks and KHV and the gang. Yeah, this house on the left hand side, you can see a little plaque on it, this is the house where they met. A number of uh, venues actually around the country. Another one in a little village called Ashby St Ledger's, not too far from here. Which I'm going to do a history ride on at some stage. But there's history all around, isn't there? Well, as usual, after riding for an hour or so, I'm ready for a cup of tea and some bacon. Bikers need bacon, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> 